Hey everyone, it's Sersha, and today I thought we would do a cozy Christmas book haul. It is very cozy in here. We even have the fire going. Can you believe it? Who would have thought? Um, no, it's very, it's very warm here, so even this hoodie is a bit much. But, um, <clears throat> I have got a nice stack of things to show you. I've got the Christmas tree lit, and, um, both the cats wandering around, and a nice cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows in it. Can you see that? I'm going to spill it all over the rug. So you might have noticed my sick voice. It's very lovely. Um, I was lucky enough to acquire a Christmas cold about a week ago and started out pretty crap and I had like two days where I was just chilling on the couch and trying not to feel sorry for myself, but it's it progressed pretty quickly and it's not been like the end of the world. Definitely not the worst cold I've ever had. Um, <clears throat> so, I yeah, I didn't do a video Sunday you may have noticed, or maybe nobody noticed, but I thought I would just take a just a wee break for the weekend and I had a really nice Christmas weekend. I got to see quite a bit of my family, which isn't a very big family, so that was nice. Um, and just wanted to talk about some of these things. About half of these things my mom gave me and like half I um, used a gift card she gave me. And also a... No, there was no end to that sentence. Sorry, I just noticed that there were some more books over here that I didn't grab that are supposed to be part of this. So, pardon my reach, but I just went um, back to the bookstore today and grabbed a few more things, so we must talk about all of them. Okay, now the stack is too big to handle. So let's start on top here. I hope you had a, a good Christmas, by the way, and I know this is a hard time of year for a lot of people. I definitely get, like, in a funk about the end of the year and having not accomplished anything, um, that's a tough one for me. I love Christmas. I love feeling cozy and I love, um, you know, how family that doesn't have anything to do with each other for a whole year suddenly wants to hang out. Um, that seems to be a common theme and I just like the vibe and I think I'd, I think I'd like it even more if it was snowing. It's been in the high 70s here, so yeah. This fire on the screen is the only fire I can possibly have. This is my cat's Christmas stocking they've had forever, and there's their, their little portrait. Aren't they adorable? I had that portrait commissioned and it's printed in many different sizes all around my house because it is so special. Um, anyway, if you are struggling this time of year, you're not alone, and I really encourage you to reach out because there is help. My therapist and I are tight. We have extremely varied conversations every week. Um, we're all just figuring it out, hanging in there. So you're definitely not alone. Um, and if you had a fantastic Christmas full of joy, good for you. And let's just hope that, um, <clears throat> things don't get worse. Can we just, can we just hope for that? Can we just, can things just not get worse? Okay, cool. So this is a cute little bookstore postcard set. No, these aren't all like books, but this is book related. Um, so there's a hundred postcards of, of beautiful shops around the world, and I went through all of it with my mom and I had to figure out which um, which of these bookshops I had been in. And I picked out a few of them that I have been to, and this one on top, so exciting, because this is Armchair Books, and that is a place with, um, whoa. It's hard to talk, you know, like, it's hard to talk, isn't it? Um, this is a place that was near where I lived in Edinburgh, in Scotland. Um, so when I was going to school there, that was a nice shop to go into. And had 
a lot of old, old books. And one thing I got there that was super cool, which I should have brought over here, but I'm not getting up again, um, is a Silmarillion calendar from the 70s. And I got that the first day that um, the bookstores or any stores like opened back up during lockdown last year and we were allowed to go. And so they opened and I was like, Silmarillion? Are you joking? I need it. Um, and this is also like almost next door to Mary's Milk Bar, which is the greatest ice cream gelato you will ever have in your entire life. Um, it's in Grass Market. And you can see Edinburgh Castle from there. So you get your ice cream, you turn around, and there's the castle on the hill. You take a picture of your ice cream with the castle. Um, you can go to the bookstore first. And also, there is a cat cafe right across from there, too. So all Grass Market's really cool. Um, cat, cat Cafe is Maison de Moggy, and they have stellar cats. There was a sphinx cat that tried to jump into my beverage um, and eat my cake, and so I, I always appreciate that. Now this is Barter Books, and this is an annex in the north of England, and I recognized it right away. I have been here a few times, or maybe only two times, but hey, uh, I went there back in 2016 um, with my friend who, who lives near there and um, then again in 2019 when I was living in Edinburgh and I was in the Harry Potter Society oh this is my Harry Potter Society hoodie by the way what up um, you can you can't see the back but can you see it can you see it I don't know anyway um, I was sorted into Gryffindor so we did this Harry Potter like field trip, you know, grad school field trip, it was very cute. And we um, got to see some of the places where they filmed. We saw like the original um, castle green area where they where they filmed the Quidditch, like learning how to pick up the broom part, so that was super cool. And this uh, bookstore was right near there. So we stopped there, it is built in an old train station, so I love that. I love when places are repurposed like that and they keep like the vibe. There's a, a train, like a toy train that goes around the top of the bookstore. This one is Foils in London. And I loved it there. I try to stop there every time I'm in London. It's just huge. It's massive. Um, and yeah. I just I love the gigantic bookstore where you just you start to get a little bit overwhelmed toward the end. And another one like that is Powell's, and this is in Portland, Oregon. This place is awesome. When I was there uh, years ago, I um, they have a book printing machine, and so the first book that I ever wrote, I had the PDF, like I happened to have the PDF on my phone um, that I could send, and so I um, sent it to their machine, and they helped me print an actual copy of the book, which I could show you. Um, but maybe I won't. Just imagine it. I'm looking at it, it's up on the shelf. Um, <clears throat> not like spectacular quality or anything, but... Because I had to choose right there, and I didn't have like a cover designed yet, and I had to choose just a photo and like put a crappy font on it and make the cover, but it's very cool that they, they did that there. Really fun experience. Oh, Shakespeare and Company. Paris. Who's been to these places? Fond memories of Shakespeare and Company. Um, it's the English language bookstore in Paris, which is, is right near uh, Notre Dame. So you can stand outside the bookstore and see the cathedral, and I have a very, very nice memory of doing that when I lived in Paris for a very short while um, and was exploring on my own. I just loved, I loved that vibe of this really cool bookstore with the view of the cathedral. Um, got quite a few books there, and when you get books there, they have like a stamp that it's their, their stamp inside the book. <coughs> <coughs> Lovely place. And this is the Strand, Strand Bookstore in New York City, which I don't remember, like, vividly, but I was there. I know I was there. A long time ago. And I was surprised there weren't... Um, there weren't any from Seattle that I found in this stack because there were some awesome bookstores in Seattle. Anyway, 
This one is Tattered Cover in Denver, Colorado, which I actually went to this year. And um, I think this is the location I went to because I believe there are a couple locations. But uh, that place awesome. So many books. And then the, these are a couple that I was like, I should have been to these, but I don't think I have. Well, this one is the Old Town Bookshop. <clears throat> And it's in Edinburgh, so it's like, it's something that I walked past, but I don't think I ever went in, because the thing about Edinburgh is there are one million bookstores. Oh no, where's the last one? Oh, here. Yeah, so this one upsets me greatly, because this is at Libreria Aqua Alta, which is in Venice, Italy. And I went to Venice some years back, and I did this, like, tour thing where it was pretty much all people on their own between 1830 and, um, we were on this tour together of Italy and made great friends and all that, but, like, half the group kind of wandered off this way and half wandered off that way, and this was, like, kind of, this was the first place that we went on the trip, and my half of the group did not find this bookstore, didn't know about it, and the other half found it and showed us pictures later, and I was just so devastated. I was like, are you, are you kidding me? How did I not find that bookstore? And we only had like a few hours in Venice. Anyway, that was super cool. Um, then today I picked up this. It's the second one of the Biblio, sorry, those antiquarian sticker books. This one is called Bibliophilia. Um, I believe I showed the other book in a previous video. And you'd think this would be all like book stickers, it's really not. It's the same idea as the first one. It's just a bunch of, you know, really cool, like, Victorian stickers, which I will never take out of the book because I can't stand to ruin it. And, like, I don't really know what where I would put them that would look better than they do in here. So, I don't know. If you have any creative ideas, tell me. <clears throat> Here we have um, one that my mom got me and actually I had seen before and wanted, um, so I thought it was cool that she, she got this for me and she didn't know that. How to Catch a Mole. And um, this is Wisdom from a Life Lived in Nature by Mark Hamer. And it just looks so cool. It says it's part natural history, part memoir, part poetry, all entirely gorgeous. Um, it's, a, it's this memoir of this guy who used to... Um, he used to catch moles. He used to kill moles, basically, um, as like a, you know, like pest control. Um, and then he stopped. And I cannot wait to read it. I might have to do that soon because it just looks really, really cool. I love nature writing. I love moles. You know how I am. Okay, here we go. We've got quite a few. Why don't we do all of these that are related together? So first, um, I picked up this one yesterday, and all Titanic books are just called Titanic. Titanic, The Death and Life of a Legend, and this one I thought uh, might be uniquely interesting because it's from 1986, so it's the year after they discovered um, the wreck of the Titanic in the Atlantic Ocean. So I thought that would be a unique perspective, I don't know. Um, we will see. It's it's tough because, like, I I also want to rate things about Titanic. But when you see how many books there are, it's a little bit intimidating. How could I have a new angle or something different to say that hasn't been said a million times? Um, <clears throat> but, no, I, I don't know. I feel like we, we never will know every detail about it, um, but it'd be cool to try. So that brings me to another Titanic book, Titanic First Accounts. Um, and this one seemed interesting. Well, first of all, can we just appreciate, can we appreciate this cover? Oh my god, I'm gonna drop it. Look at that. I love a clever cover. Um, so what I can gather about this, because there's not like a description, what I gather is that these are um, accounts that were written by people who survived and somebody compiled them into this book. That's what I think. 
um, and there's also parts from the, the U.S. Inquiry. <sighs> yeah, it just looked really interesting. It's like a lot of, a lot of different bits and bobs compiled into this, so we will see. And that one is from, I think, 2018. 20... No. Sorry. I'm thinking of the other one. This is 2012, which is interesting because that's the centennial, it's the 100th anniversary of the sinking. Um, and then we have this one my mom got me, and it's Titanic, true stories of her passengers, crew, and legacy. You never knew there were so many Titanic books, did you? And this one, this one is from 2018, I think. Yeah. And this just looks like another cool um, <clears throat> telling of the disaster, and I liked that there was this chapter in here especially. Winged and four-legged passengers, because there, there were, sadly, animals on the Titanic, and only three little doggos survived. Um, and then we have, yes, we're doing all Titanic things. I got this for myself. I like to buy myself stuff around Christmas, you know, you know how it is. Um, and I just finished reading this magazine, and let me tell you, it was so gripping, and it took forever. Like, magazines, I just, I take so long to read them. There's just so much information and so many great images. Um, so I was reading that in the bath, I was reading it with the cats, it was extremely gripping. And then, let's see, is this the last Titanic thing? I also got this one for myself. Secrets of the Titanic. I think this is by the same people that did the magazine. The truth about the tragedy. And you know, that's a very clickbait title. Um, I doubt I will, I will learn anything that is um, shocking and true. Because there's so many theories. Conspiracy theories and whatever nonsense about, about the Titanic and not all of it is true and we cannot know everything that is true because we only have um only have accounts and word of mouth and we don't we don't have any actual like footage of what happened you know so that is all the titanic stuff and then i got because barnes and noble was doing 50 percent off um, hardcover books. This looks super interesting. It's called Maiden Voyages and it says Magnificent Ocean Liners and the Women Who Traveled and Worked Aboard Them. And I had to get it because there is a chapter in here on Violet Jessup who was a stewardess on Titanic and survived uh, multiple shipwrecks and I can't wait to learn more about her and all of these other amazing women who sailed the seas. Um, why am I getting so into nautical things? I don't know, it's just got a grip on me right now. Maybe because I'm terrified of boats and water. Um, I've been on a lot of like family cruises. It's not, it's never really been like my thing because I feel so trapped and scared and I've always thought like, what happens if there's a disaster? But now I feel like I'm a lot more prepared from doing so much research. But also, you never know what you would actually do in the moment. Um, let's see, my mom also got me this, like, really interesting looking, it looks like a 1980s magazine that a teenage boy would have in his bedroom, and I love that, and it's just, it's got Timothy Chalamet and Dune, stuff about Dune in here, um, and it's like all black and white, um, I don't know where she finds this stuff, I thought that was cool, and then she also got me How Philosophy Works, because you know I have my hyperfixations, so um, one of those recently has been philosophy because of The Good Place. And we've got lots of very visual things in here. Um, philosophy scares me, you know, it's like I want to know things, but I'm scared to know things because like, can you know anything? And if you think you know something, maybe you won't like what you find out. It's all just very meta. Um, got this today. 
which I've always wanted, and because it was 50% off, today was the day that it had to happen. Uh, Humans of New York, and I don't know if you follow Humans of New York on social media, but I just love these stories. Um, they just make me cry endlessly, and there are so many in this book, so I thought, hey, what do I need? A good cry, as if I don't have enough of that. Um, and then the last book thing, I also got this. Um, a hundred most beautiful movie songs. And this is a stunning collection of sheet music. And I... Okay, so I have a piano, and my piano bench mysteriously disappeared a while back in one of my moves. Um, and I'm still bitter about it, so I've just like not gotten a new piano bench, and therefore have just have just not played piano. Um, and I've never been great at it. Like I I struggled pretty hard in high school. Like I, I took it as an elective, um, but I loved it. Like when I could get the hang of it. And so what made me get this? I just simply had to because check out what is included in here. My heart will go on. Um, and also, may it be from Lord of the Rings. Um, there's some Phantom of the Opera. There's some Disney stuff on here. Um, Hunchback of Notre Dame. We've got Climb Every Mountain from Sound of Music. So just like a ton of songs that I would want to play because I'm only really inspired to play piano when it is songs from movies that I want to do. Um, I find it comforting. I don't know. I love movie soundtracks. So, aside from those books, just like three things I want to show you. Um, my boyfriend got me this very handsome edition of Clue that looks like a book, but it is the board game. And it's like just very vintagey looking. I just think it's so cool because it can actually like go on your bookshelf and look pretty neat. And I didn't have, um, I didn't have Clue. Why don't I have Clue? Well, now I do. And then another board game. My mom got me this. Titanic the game. Can you believe that? Um, so on Christmas Day, my mom and my boyfriend and I, we spent an hour just getting through the rules of this game. Well, I should say my boyfriend did all the reading and had to explain it to us because I have like this allergy to um, instructions and games. I simply cannot sit down and, and listen or focus or read them. I start like walking around and getting anxious and nervous um, and finding anything else to do. I don't know why I, just, I cannot do it. So thank goodness he was able to teach us and it was actually pretty fun. It's a really fun game. So that was cool. And then he also got me this blueprint, which I have to frame still. Um, but it is Olympic and Titanic, the blueprints, because they were super similar. They're sister ships, if you didn't know that. Um, so I can't wait to hang that up. <sighs> yeah, got a lot of other things that... Um, I won't, I won't put in this video, um, since it's mostly books, but just nice, like, a lot of candy and, um, candles. I got this, this candle, which you cannot smell, but just pretend that you can. It is supposed to be a, um, bakery, corner bakery, and I just like the nautical looking, like, wicker thing on it. Anyway, and then my mom gave me this 100 piece, 101 piece puzzle that I did in like five seconds of the Space Needle. Um, we love to just, to do puzzles together because she absolutely cannot. And then I just do all the work and then she's like, oh, well, look at that. Um, so yeah, all in all, a nice Christmas and let us just leave this year behind and sail into a new one with uh, lots of hope and the ability to stay in the present because that is really what matters. Thank you so much for watching and keep it cozy everyone. I'll see you soon.